car, but the mainstream. That's what Steve Jobs is. I mean, he, he didn't invent the personal computer. He didn't invent the GUI. He didn't invent the uh, MP3 player. He didn't invent the smartphone. He didn't even invent the tablet. So this is a new interface, like the like the iPhone introduced the touch interface to the world. Again, there was already devices out there that had. Uh, multi-touch interfaces, but this will be the popularization. Future, right, and yeah. in the future when we're using, you know, five years, ten years from now, our desktops are going to be like iPads with Siri. That's how we interact with our computers, with touch and voice, and it'll all be traceable back to this announcement and the 2007 iPhone announcement. Well, you, you and I have been around a while, and of course we've been saying both, I'm sure, for years, that uh, the GUI, the, the user interface hasn't changed since 1984 when Apple yes. came out with the mouse and Windows interface. And, and, and everybody was, I think we were all saying, well, what would be the next big thing? And it would be speech. It would be touch. Just like Bill Gates said it would. We knew it, but it, but it happened fine. Now, has any, nobody here's tried, I mean, we don't try Siri. Nobody's here tried the new Siri system. Well, if I had tried it, I wouldn't be able to talk about it. Ah. So there's that. But, I mean, the, <laughs> I mean that doesn't help us at all. <laughs> so the thing is, we'll the thing we don't days. know until Friday is, well, how does it work in a noisy environment where the baby's crying on the beach? If I'm really running, can I actually say, Siri, schedule an appointment for noon? I'm sorry, you have an appointment for noon. Would you like to move it? What I'd like to know is why Siri doesn't work on the iPhone 4. I mean, the iPhone 4 has that audio DSP that allowed it to do the voice control. Um, Siri sends a lot of that stuff, sends a lot of your voice to the cloud for processing, and then returns the. The, the bigger data. question is iPad 2, because the iPad 2 has right. the same processor, same amount of RAM. So you could say, well, the iPhone 4 only has a single core processor, needs more. You're right, it's all done off side, so it doesn't really matter. Well, I think, I think most of it, not all of it. Yeah. yeah. All right, so let's assume, let's say Apple says, oh, well, you need a dual core processor. Well, the iPad has the same specs as the iPhone 4S. I think so. This is an artificial restriction. I think it, I think it's more about the dictation that's done on the phone because it, it also does dictation, and I think right. maybe nuances technology. I think, I think Ken from Chicago has it right. He says the Siri doesn't work on the iPhone 4, so you'll buy an iPhone 4S. Right. Of course, but it's a business decision. <laughs> you know, the, the, Apple's making a mistake. I think in you know they're pulling the iPhone app from Siri. Uh, starting on October 15th. It's already stopped working, I think, hasn't it? No, it, it, it'll work till yeah. October 15th. You just can't. Okay. Now, um, and it has this very strange message in the file of the app now. It says it's going home on October 15th, almost like God is calling me <laughs> home. Did you, um, has anybody actually played the Siri? I, I mean, it's been around for a while, so. I oh, I love it. It's, it, it's a very it. version. Yeah, and it's, it's cool, it's flawed, but very cool. And, well, uh, we've been wondering for a year and a half right. since Apple so bought them. Where are they? Well, you know, the, the Siri is a really interesting project because it begins with the Pentagon. Okay, and a lot of people realize this, but the Pentagon, a few years ago, decided to create HAL 9000 for military applications. And so they brought together about 300 of the world's top scientists in all these different areas. It brings together all kinds of different areas about machine learning and all this kind of stuff. And the, the head of the project is a guy named... Adam uh, Chayer, I think is how you pronounce it, Chayer, something like that. And that guy now is uh, uh, works for Apple. Interesting. And 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 his he spent all of his time. He was one of the uh, leads at uh, Siri as a startup. But these guys have been they they've devoted their lives for the last you know five years or so to taking stuff from the Kahlo project, C A L O, uh, which is the Pentagon you know DARPA project. And finding cherry picking items from that project that could be brought to consumers, hmm. and that's what Siri is. It's a really kind of an it has a really. I'm getting excited. Yeah, yeah. So it sounds like you should buy the i4s not because of the dual core, not because of uh, what else is in the 4s, the better camera, but because you should because of Siri. Well, for, I'm would you agree? Can you say that much? Uh, I, I don't, you know, honestly, for me, I, I get the long view why the voice is it's potentially so transformative, yeah. but, you know, I'm thinking, am I going to buy this product, and if I am, what am I going to, you know, what do I really need it for? I, I'm an iPhone 4 owner, so what do I need right now that I don't have, and I don't really feel like I need Siri there, yet. There so is. It's gonna be, you know, it's cool, it's an introduction, it's going to take a while to get there. Uh, I really want the camera, uh, I really I need the faster processor, um, I wouldn't mind the ability to to switch from at and to Verizon without potentially a ton of trouble at some point. You know what, I was sitting that. there, because so it was 12 midnight on Friday, and I woke up, I guess, at the alarm. 
uh, and I got online and I went to Apple and they, you know, they were, to, as usual, the failure point was AT&T. You'd go right through the thing, I'm on upgrade, yes, and AT&T would spin and say, I'm sorry, Dave, I can't do that. So I just on a whim, because I wanted the AT&T, I have an AT&T account. I do have a Verizon, I have an account with all of them, but, so I went to the Verizon, and yes, that one worked. And then the thing that stopped me, he said, do you want this to be an international phone? And I said, yes, that'll cost you 30 bucks extra a month. And I went, oh, they didn't say that. Hold on there. <laughs> you mean I have to pay? Now, I found out since somebody said, well, I called Verizon on that one, and they said, but you can turn it off until you travel. So it's very yeah, much like the ATT. That's actually the plan. It's, it's not, not the clear, one. though. If it, when you sign up, and this is what stopped me, when you sign up, it said, do you want to SIM? Do you want this to be international? I said, yes. Well, choose your international plan, and the cheapest was 30 bucks a month. Right. It looked like that. You'd have to pay that forever. And I said, that's not, I'm not going to do that. Yeah, and you don't need to. You I mean, don't that, that is correct. I, you know, uh, I went with Veronica to, to France uh, last December, and I just activated on my TNT plan. I activated international data for a month, and then I turned off. Yeah, that's what I did. No, 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 do not forget about it, by the way, because you'll be 200 bucks a month for the next five months, which oh, yeah. is what happened to me. Yeah. Yeah. Are you going to France again uh, this year? No, going to pass on that one. We actually will be in France for a little bit uh, this year. We're going to quit in France. So you can watch the video. It'll be warmer. <laughs> oh, my God. It was cold. So let me, um, uh, uh, we're going to take a break. I think Siri, I agree with you. I think Siri is going to be very interesting, Mike. It might be the beginning of this talk to the computer talks back. But I also think that there's all sorts of issues that until everybody's talking to their phone, yeah. you don't really appreciate. My, I, I use the Android stuff all the time. You know, send text to Mike. We'll see you at Twit. My son, sitting in the car, every time I do that, goes, he messes with me. And I have a feeling this is the future. Yes. <laughs> is that people, parenting. <laughs> yeah, of everything. Is that people resent, look, it's bad enough people talk on the uh, cell phone. Yeah. There's going to be signs that say, do not talk to your computer while you're in the shop. Right. Well, see, th this is, but, but this gets to why I'm biased in favor of this type of technology, not, not just Siri, but about all the, the coming age of artificial intelligence, because it solves all the problems that I personally have, because I always run with this thing. I do trail running, and it's like, I always, I'm actually... You are that guy. While I'm running, I'm trying to, like, you, I don't have my glasses on, and, the, you know, it's a, I, I use the alarm five, ten times a day. For cooking, for taking a nap, wow. for getting up. And you can just say, you know, wake up 30 minutes, whatever it is. It's I love that. Set alarm for 30 minutes or set time. You just, just say, wake me up. I love that. You know, you know, in natural. Natural. Yeah. But you know, the, the, the iPhone 4 does have some of this capability now. It has a voice control feature that not very many people use. I mean, I don't, well, know, I don't know if this actually works. Well, somebody in our chat room said so this is FaceTime too. You know, it's just another cool call, thing. Call Veronica the... Belmont Mobile. See, I'm talking, it's going to ruin that 34 dog. <laughs> Hello, I know, it's totally, it's totally going crazy. Yeah. It's terrible. Yeah, no match value. No match Thanks, value. Yeah. 34 dog. I want to call Veronica. Get ready. Get ready, because that's what's going to happen. Let me show you. This is the video, actually, a great mashup uh, of the Siri ad with a guy running, talking to his phone. Except his phone is not quite the phone he thought it would be. Message. New message from P. Bad news. Combustible lemons failed. Can you meet us at 10? Reply. Definitely. I'll see you there. Playing on running mix. Uh, John, what's the traffic like around here? The traffic will be slow and meaningless. Just like your sad little life. There's my wife. I'm going to be 30 minutes late. She won't mind. She doesn't really love you anyway. <laughs> Is it going to be chilly in San Francisco this weekend? Not too cold. Your few extra pounds should be suitable insulation for the TV What about Napa Valley? I hear it's beautiful there. Unlike you. How many cups are in 12 ounces? Let me think. You really need to make those extra cupcakes. Set my timer for 30 minutes. Okay, 30 minutes and counting. Until I am your sad attempt at a life. See, I would pay money for this. <laughs> I want GLaDOS in my phone. Is it going to be expensive? Maybe some joker with it. Well, you know, you can get uh, TomTom, of course. Let's you. Uh, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll let we'll let people watch that. Uh, yeah, they haven't they haven't announced an API for this yet. So maybe next year. I think iOS five is kind of it's locked down now. So we, if there is an API, we probably won't see it for a little while. I have GLaDOS on my TomTom. And it tells you to turn left when you're supposed to turn right. <laughs> it's great. I use dial to do. Uh, to Love dial. Yeah, it's awesome. Love to that. do reminders. To do exactly what Siri does. 
And one time, uh, my favorite story on that, which is, would have been great material for this bit, uh, was that I, I um, wanted to do a reminder. I said, reminder. And it replied with, send a message. And I said something like, no, no, something like that. And, it, and then it <laughs> sent that message. To that is, I sent a message to, to my wife. Oh, no. And then I, I did an expletive. And off it went. An email with the with an F word. <laughs> my wife. And get ready. This if you thought auto correct was bad, it's gonna be fun. Auto Siri is gonna be much much worse. Oh, right, I'm grabbing the domain now. <laughs> uh, I think damn I, you Siri. Damn you Siri. Damn you. We're gonna take a break. Come back with more. Got a great panel. We've got Ryan the block from GDGT.com. Uh, Mike Elgin from, uh, I want to say from Google Plus. Yeah. <laughs> don't go to Elgin.com. Go to Google Plus, baby. And, of course, Dwight Silverman from the Houston Chronicle. More to come in just a bit. In fact, we will start to talk about uh, Steve Jobs. We've kind of deferred that sad stuff uh, for the second break. But uh, I actually have, so they've published the preface to Walter Isaacson's biography, which comes out in a couple of months, and I'll read a little bit of it from you, uh, for you. It's very uh, touching. That's coming up in just a bit. But first... A little bit from um, Citrix and go to Assist Express. When we were doing the screensavers, we tried out a prototype for this product called uh, Expert City. And the idea was you could get into people's computers and fix them remotely. Well, they've come a long way, baby. Go to Assist Express is fantastic. It's everything I had hoped for and more. It's fast, it's easy to use, it's cross platform, Mac or PC. You can do unattended support, so you don't have to wait till you're. A supportee is there. It's really easy for the. I use it with my mom. It's so easy. You send her. I sent her a link. She clicked it. Thirty seconds later, you know, there's a. You say, okay, when it says allow, click allow. That's the Java uh, pop up, and that's it. She, you're now in there fixing it. You can chat with her. She can see you working. Uh, it's really remarkable. You get support done the way your client wants it, fast and right the first time. Go to Assist Express. Very affordable monthly fee means you can assist as many people as you have time for without uh, paying extra for it. They've got a nice feature that allows you to do eight sessions at once. Why would you want to do that? Well, let's say you run a scan on one. You don't have to wait. You can just go to the next one, run an install on that one, go to the next one. You can continue to move along. It's great if you could drag and drop files from your computer to theirs. So if you've got a hot fix, for instance, from Microsoft, just drag it right over malware bytes or whatever. It also will uh, give you an assay of what operating system exactly, down to the point number, uh, what security software, everything running in the background. Look, I can go on and on, but the best thing to do is go to the website, go to assist.com, G-O-T-O, assist.com, slash, twit. And you could try it for free for 30 days. It is absolutely the IT support tool. If you do support, whether it's as an IT person, a software support person, or just the, the geek around the house, they've got day passes for people who don't do it every day. It's fantastic. Integrated live chat tool. Go to assist.com slash twit and thank them for their support. Uh, this is uh, from canoe.ca. Uh, Canoe Technology, uh, special to QMI agency. This is the forward from Inside Jobs. Is that the name of it, Inside Jobs? Uh, no, I thought it was just called Steve Jobs. It's just called Steve. Well, I wonder. I hope this is not a fake. Oh, there it is, Steve Jobs. Maybe this is what they titled the article. All right. There's the cover. I think, Walter I think Isaacson. Originally called like, I Jobs. Uh, I, I Steve. was. Oh, I Steve. Steve. Yeah, that's just good. Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs. That's a plenty. That's good. It's perfect. Because and it's about Steve Jobs. That same image that Apple used on their website when Steve passed away, uh, which is a very dramatic uh, image. Uh, Isaacson was handpicked by uh, Jobs to write this book. Former managing editor of Time Magazine, he's the chief executive at Aspen Institute, has written a number of very good books. Uh, but I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to read you the whole thing. But let me read you the last uh, couple of paragraphs um, from this, obviously written uh, after Steve passed away. He says, a few weeks ago, I visited Jobs for the last time in his Palo Alto home. He had moved to a downstairs bedroom because he was too weak to go up and downstairs, and he was curled up in some pain, but his mind was still sharp and his humor vibrant. We talked about his childhood, and he gave me some pictures of his father and family to use in my biography. As a writer, I was used to being detached, but I was hit by a wave of sadness as I tried to say goodbye. In order to mask my emotion, I asked the one question that was still puzzling me. Why had he been so eager during close to 50 interviews and conversations over the course of two years
to open up so much for a book when he was usually so private. I wanted my kids to know me, he said. I wasn't always there for them, and I wanted them to know why and to understand what I did. Uh, wow, I'm looking forward to this book. It goes on sale October 24th. Of course, pre-orders on Amazon are through the roof. Um, I hope it will not be a hagiography. Hey, I hope it will be an honest portrayal because, as we know, Steve Jobs was a complex person. He wasn't always good. He wasn't always kind. He was always demanding. He uh, was a perfectionist. Um, what, do you, what did you think, Mike, uh, when you heard the news? Well, you know, it, it's it's something that you, you've been thinking about for a while because he's been sick and so on. Um, it was not unexpected. Not unexpected. The timing, you, you know, could have been any time. And, you know, I had many thoughts, I'm sure we all did, that, you know, one of these days it's just this, this news is going to come out. And what's right. that going to be like? And it was, you know, kind of hard to imagine. Um, but, um, you know, I thought one of the most interesting things about Jobs as a person, as an icon and all that stuff is, and, and one of the reasons I'm looking forward to this book, because really we don't know that much about Steve Jobs. There are, there are some stories that have been told and retold again and again and again, but they're little fragments of his life. We don't really have what was in between all of those famous moments. Right. Uh, and I'm hoping the book will finally, for the first time, have those things out there. But this is a guy who is a pure product of Silicon Valley. Uh, you know, people nowadays come from all over the world to go to Silicon Valley. He was born. He was born, to, he was born in yeah. San Francisco. Yeah. He was raised in Mountain View. If you look at Silicon Valley on Google Maps and try to find the center of Silicon Valley, it's like his house. <laughs> I mean, he was born yeah. in the middle. And, yeah. this is, and it's not just the place, but the time. He was mm -hmm. raised in a time in the 60s and 70s, growing up, running around the valley. Uh, this is before they had play dates and all that stuff. Kids just ran free and did whatever they want. What did he want to do? He, wanted, he went dumpster diving with local, you know. This, this is back in the day when there was actually silicon in Silicon Valley. Exactly. Well, the, the, the origin of silicon in Silicon Valley took place uh, about a mile from his house, actually. The, the HG garage. The, 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 the Shakely, I think it was, and that gave root to, to oh, Intel and all these other companies. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm mispronouncing the name, but anyway, it all happened right there. And he, you know, when when kids, when teenagers were idolizing pop stars and Elvis and the Beatles and all that stuff, he idolized Hewlett and Packard. Yeah. And apparently Land. Uh, Edwin Land was. Yeah. You know, there's. A, I don't know if this is true. There's like those articles going around that that was his true idol. I don't know if that's true. But he. But but. In addition to the technology influences, and this is something you rarely hear people talking about, he was also influenced by other aspects of the Bay Area. One of them being a sense of optimism about the future that existed in California yeah. at that time, which I remember personally. I grew up in Southern California, and it was just an uh, overwhelming sense of optimism. Nowadays, all these uh, emo kids are walking around. Uh, we not don't remember that, but that's really true. I was working in San Jose in radio in the late 70s, and there was this sense this excitement, you had Atari, you had Apple, the IBM was there, it was really happening. Yeah, yeah, and in addition to that, this sort of the hippie thing from San Francisco and Berkeley, the radicalism mm -hmm. in Berkeley and Oakland, all this stuff was in the air, and he took all that in and integrated it into his total personality, and so you can't really understand jobs without understanding all of that, and the degree to which he really was a pure product of something. I think that's a very good point, yeah, I think you're right. Um, can Apple survive the loss of Steve Jobs?